the group behind the petition to block Palm Beach State College from building the campus in Loxahatchee Groves will go to court if necessary to force a vote on the issue, their attorney said last week. Our position is that everything was adequately filed, said Megan Hogson, an attorney with Robert N. Hartzell, PA, in Pompano Beach. They are entitled under the town charter to put this to a referendum vote. Last month town clerk Susan Ephorn deemed insufficient the 267-person signed petition to stop the campus, saying the full text of the ordinance wasn't attached and that the affidavit that was submitted failed to include the correct language to inform the town clerk that each person who signed the petition had the chance to read the full ordinance text. There were two land use ordinances the town council approved in August, clearing the way for the college campus at B Road and Southern Boulevard. One amended future land use, and the second regulated property development. The group, led by President Todd McClendon, immediately filed an affidavit to challenge the ruling. The town council at Tuesday's meeting received the affidavit but did not discuss it. The council is scheduled to vote March 19 on whether the petition is sufficient. For months, the town has been saying residents who opposed the campus had ample time to form a petition. McClendon, however, said the town charter prohibited them from doing so until the final land use amendments were passed. After that happened, McClendon said the charter states that any group wishing to start a petition has to wait 30 days to make sure there are no legal challenges to the ordinance. It's a Johnny-come-lately petition, but it was the only legal way for us to do it, McClendon said. There was no legal basis for doing the petition for a referendum before it was enacted. Town manager Mark Gutney, however, said Merclandon is misinterpreting the town charter. There's a 30-day window for people to appeal, and he didn't do that, Gutney said. He was waiting to see if somebody else was going to challenge, and I don't know why he would do that unless he didn't want to challenge the ordinance. Mayor David Browning said the college waited two months before closing on the land to see if there would be any legal challenges to the deal. If there was a challenge, they had the ability to walk away from the deal before they bought the land, Browning said. PBSC closed on the 75-acre parcel on October 30. McClendon said the town has been using scare tactics to suppress a vote by telling residents it could be on the hook for as much as $7 million if the deal falls apart. That total would include the $4.5 million PBSC paid for the land as well as legal fees. But McClendon said the lawsuit PBSC has threatened to file against the town under the Burt Harris Private Property Rights Protection Act is baseless. Enacted in 1995, the clause states that property owners are entitled to some form of compensation if they could demonstrate that a governmental action inordinately burdens their property. The clause, however, also states that governmental entities are not considered property owners under the Act. That means the college isn't entitled to compensation under the Act, McClendon said. The lawsuit all revolved around the Burt Harris Act, but their basis for lawsuit has no weight at all. But Browning said the threat of a lawsuit is real. That's not something I'm prepared to put our residents through, he said. If that's a scare tactic, so be it. If the town throws out the petition at the next council meeting, McClendon said he would either start another one or take the town to court to force a referendum vote. This referendum is going to happen, McClendon said. It's just a matter of how long we have to fight before it happens.